Alright guys, what is up? Here in a game between Michael Leo and Shrine Master. This is a bit special just because um, Michael Leo is actually a very good Forsaken Waste player. He just came back. I have recorded games of him in the past, but he's been gone for quite a time now. Um, I don't remember if he actually was a Forsaken Waste main, but since he's back, or since he has been back, he has only been playing Forsaken Waste. Um, before, I played him like three times, I've lost every single time. And he's been playing a Forsaken Waste meta battle group. So it was a very strong Forsaken Waste meta battle group. It was very interesting. Um, just because you see a lot of meta battle groups in general, but Forsaken Waste is not one of them. Um, um, just in general, Forsaken Waste isn't played too often. Um, I feel like the two least played factions are uh, Forsaken Waste and um, Iron for Stronghold. But maybe it's just because I, I don't watch the games between uh, you know PSN players too much and they might be playing that. But at least at the higher ranks... Um, you see a lot of SL, a lot of SP, um, FS, UD every once in a while, right? Um, KF, obviously, but not too much for Sagan Waste and not too much um, IS for some reason. I think it's just because um, maybe the, the kit they have don't really allow them to like stay at par. I mean, a lot of the meta right now, in my opinion, has to do with like um, summons. Right, we see so much of the Rift Lords out, so you have to be able to deal with those. And KF can do that in that they have, you know, Grimlock's Bane, right? So they can deal with the, um, them that way. Um, and just like insane damage. And and obviously, this is a wooden scales battle group. I'm guessing. Sorry, um, this is a wooden scales battle group. I'm guessing with the uh, Enchantress and stuff. Um, and I think he's played this before. Um, but yeah, so. Michael Leo is pretty cool. Right now, he's not playing meta, though, which is kind of sad, because I would have really liked to see um, Michael Leo's meta versus Shrine Master's basically meta KF battle group. But uh, Michael Leo is very good, so he should give up somewhat of a fight. And he's playing an interesting battle group here, right? He's playing uh, Witches. So we do have the Witches here. Um, with the... Uh, it's not there. Well, he should, in theory... Uh, there we see the uh, Shimmering Flower. Now, um, we saw that coming, though, right? Because, like I said, this is a battle group which has wooden scales, um, double wooden scales, and then it plays no spells. So there's no spells in this battle group. So you don't really have to be too afraid of AoEs, but you have to be afraid of these kind of things. A lot of equipment, like Withering Fern, like Shimmering Flower, um, Special Prize, potentially, I guess. A lot of Relics in the battle group as well, obviously. Um, and equipment, right? So just no, no, no spells. So this was we saw this coming, and I think he, Michael Leo actually, like I said, Michael Leo hasn't been here in a while, so I might have seen this coming if I if I saw um, Shrine Master playing this, but Michael Leo might not have. Um, then again, I don't know. Does Forsaken Ways have good shatter? I don't think so. Do they have like a naturally good shatter, or let's say witches in this case, right? Does witch do witches have shatter? I can't think of any of the moment so he retreats here that's interesting is that a good play mm -hmm. i don't like it a mate i mean i think they're mm -hmm. because like mid to late game i don't think that forsaken waste loses this just because generally i mean isn't this more of a mid-range deck this kf thing here isn't this kf deck more mid-rangey like it's more kind of like how the sl skizik play we kind of want to keep pushing. I don't know if it's amazing late game. What scaling do they have? They have the summons, right? Hmm. What else do they have? I mean, we do have the battle leader, but again, battle leader is really good if you have like fights ongoing, right? So you get a kill, all your champs level up. You get a kill, all your but if you have one big uh, engage, then none of that will happen. While on the other hand, just went invisible. Um, on the other hand, how do witches do late game? Well, I think they do all right. Um, yeah, again, so now the street st strategist is coming out. That's a good play, just because strategist will help for the plays, right? Pull with swap. Um, but let me think again. Let's see, witches. I, I have a witch battle group, and I tried them out, um, and they used to be very strong back in the day because they had their ability, which I still don't. Have, we don't have here. There, no. Nope. No, still no. <laughs> it's kind of weird because the the main themed ability for witches is not here yet. We don't have the Elisar and Coven. It's called Coven, 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 Covenant. You hear that a lot. Anything that has to do with witches, they're called a Coven. I think C O V E N. I don't know how you pronounce it. I think it's Coven or Coven. Hmm. 
Yeah, but I was reading a, a book, and they had witches in it. Uh, and there they also, the witch, like, people were called, it was a coven. So I was like, huh, it must have to, have to do with witches, like, generally. Not just, like, a name that Pokemon around chose, but it has to, like, I wonder what the definition is. I'll look that up in a sec. All right, um, all right, so we have Commander. Votari is nice because very cheap, right? 69 Nora is pretty cheap, but so squishy. Look at this, 40 base health with zero armor. Now we have it, finally. So now we have the Elisari Coven. Coven? Again, I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so when an opposing champion is deployed, so that's how it used to be. It's deployed. Oh, into, sorry, deployed into. I was like, what? No, it's deployed into or enters a friendly dead magic zone. It becomes cursed. So how this used to work, um, how this used to work is when it was deployed in general. So not only when they're in a dead magic zone, but just in general deployed. That would mean that if you got this guy out early, then the enemy, if they were they started the game, uh, they would have minus one speed, which we all know is insane, right? Especially at the beginning when you have to run to get the fonts. So that's why this was really crazy um, back in the day because you would just do you just um, they would deploy and they'd all have curse and like you would just your whole the whole game you'd be behind just from the onset. If they were turn one, um, it was even worse. But even even not even if uh, you didn't have turn one, just everything was delayed for you when they have curse on you because of the speed reduction. Um, and not only that, but just like the dance, because it gives minus one defense, minus one speed, and minus one um, damage, right? So everything's just kind of dampened. And uh, yeah, and witches generally have some pretty strong champions. They're not horrible. They have the Osaran, uh, what's his name? Sword Mage, which is very strong just because it has loyalty. Loyalty is a bit under costed, in my opinion, as the abilities go. Um, it gives a lot of stats. Um, of course, it means that you have to play full faction, but. Um, in general, it's a very good ability. So you would have, let's see, the Sword Mage, usually you play that two times, and then um, a lot of other cool um, Forsaken Waste champions in there as well. What's cool about Forsaken, or about uh, Witches too, is obviously we don't see them played too much, so that kind of makes it cool, um, just because they're kind of fresh. But also, um, they have a lot of relics and spells that actually go with the theme. And I always really like when a theme has in theme relics and spells. I always really like that for some reason. I don't know why. Um, for example, what's another theme that has that? Um, the Snaptooth, they have a in theme spell and in theme uh, relic. Is there a theme that has in theme relic, spell, and equipment? Where they have a clause that says if witch, or if it is a, uh, a Snaptooth, or if it is a uh, priest or whatever, uh, you get this extra benefit, this extra um, thing. Um, I think there are like, all the very fleshed out themes usually do. Like, you know, elves. Um, let me think. I think deep elves, elves. Uh, Cyclops. Let's see. Cyclops have a an equipment, a relic, and a spell. So, yeah, Cyclops do. Um, anyway, so there's a lot, there's a lot out there, um, which is cool. And, yeah, so witches, what they have is they, first of all, get Forsaken Waste Exploit from a relic so they have a relic that gives for sing waste exploit um which is actually a very strong ability right it gives two damage and you get one ap back um so it's not 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 bad okay so that's that's the epochal Epoch sage not a bad um champion here the premonition is very good if you're gonna move in premonition is very strong and that looks what he's gonna do is he swapping here pulling he's gonna pull the seductress does he have the kill? He has the stun, that's for sure, right? Is he gonna soften first or just a double tap? He's probably gonna soften, stun, and then he's gonna attack once and then kill him next turn. I don't think that Trine Master is gonna kill this duck just this turn. Is he, who is he giving AP? Then he might get the kill. Is he doing the battle him? I think, yeah, okay, so he does the battle him. Oh, uh, he messed up here though. That was bad by the ranger. He should have moved the ranger up too. He just wasted two AP. Does he? Does that mess him up though? All right. So the enchantress has ooh one more damage as well. He's actually at plus three because the revere and battle master. I forgot about battle master. Who is battle master here? What? Oh, him obviously. All right. Let me think. Eighteen. He can attack once. Then he's at yeah. It's a definitely a kill. He also um gets yeah exactly with the uh hinder movement. It does count. 
So look, now he's at 14 damage. Boom, right there. What? What? He's at 13 now. They all, why did, did I, was I not watch it? Why did he not get plus one? Oh no, he did. Was he at 12 before? Hold up. Hmm. He had 15. And he had minus three defense? Yeah. I think it just got one extra damage, but I didn't see it for some reason. But everything else did. So, yeah, what we just saw was the um, the battle leader go off. And it goes off of hinder movement attacks, too. I always thought that was a little strange. Usually don't see abilities like this. Hap like, there are not too many abilities where, it, like, you can get a benefit with by using other abilities as well, like this. Where it says, uh, destroys an imposing champion. It's not like, destroys with basic attack. It just destroys. So it's a bit different. Um, so yeah, so one extra damage there, but the strategist is kind of in danger here. There is a serpent in the way, that's good, and it's right now four champions versus, uh, you know, a lot more, six, right? Um, and we have the ser this, uh, yeah, serpent in the way, like I said. Hmm, he's attacking the serpent. I wonder why. Does he not think he can kill the strategist? I think with a spell. I think if he had, that's, that's an interesting play here though, right? Because I think he could have gotten the kill if he had played, for example, um, Essence Drain. But thing is, if you went all the way up here to kill this, like go in, kill the strategist with Essence Drain, whatever champion would be up here would have a pretty big advantage, right? I mean, uh, not the uh, advantage, what I'm saying, uh, would be in danger, right? So he's gonna double tap here? Yeah, okay, he double taps. I think the reason he's double tapping with the, um, the Visionary is because he doesn't care as much if he dies. I mean, he has evasive anyway, but he's like pretty squishy. And if he like somehow moves the Visionary up here, he's definitely dead. But um, I think, whoa, did he just double deploy? How the fuck did he do that? Huh? How does he even have Nora for that? That was insane. He just double deployed 140 Nora? Did he? Am I, he just, crazy that he had that much Nora. Because uh, then he could have essence drained and done something else or like run away. I guess he, deploy, deploy is more important to him than uh, getting the kill, which is usually not that way. In uh, Forsaken Waste, Generally, you should, I think, uh, tend to um, favor getting kills over deploying, which is really awkward. Basically, there's no no real uh, um, faction that does that too often. I mean, SP, obviously, I mean, that's the, the biggest, you know, polar opposites, is in SP, you just want to, every time you can deploy, you deploy, right? Um, there's so many times where I'm like, man, I'm losing, I'm losing, but I'm just going to keep deploying, and then all of a sudden I'm winning. What? How, how did this happen? I just kept deploying, but I didn't play a spell. I was always just kind of behind, kind of behind, kind of behind, and then you just all of a sudden you're ahead. And you're like, well, how did this happen? And it's really weird. I remember when I first, first, first started playing this game, um, I had we had a, I had a guild named Raid. Or I, it wasn't my guild. I was in a guild called Raid um, with like the big chief and stuff and, and uh, little Zay. I don't know. Yeah, that doesn't actually help. Ooh, it does. I thought that would not help, but there we go. There's a shatter, at least. Ah, there you go. That's a shatter. Good shatter, actually. So probably the, one of the best Forsaken Way shatters you have. You have Rune as well. Anyway, um, and I was playing against or with someone. What's he doing here? Stun? No, he's not in range. What is he doing? Swap? No, he doesn't even have it. What are you? Why are you going so far forward? What the? I mean, he's in dead magic zone, but still, he's very far forward here. Soften. He goes in that far and softens. Wow. That's a little risky. I mean, you just double deployed, and you're ahead. What the heck are you doing? Are you going to play a spell here? Grabby hands? Grabby hands, let's go. Grabby hands! Anyway, I'm going to get back on the, um, what I was saying before, is that, yeah, and I was told, hey, man, because I was playing SP against someone else who was playing SP. And he said, you know what? All you got to do, look at that, five turns of curse here. He said, all you got to do is keep deploying. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, that's what I did. And I kept killing. I w what I would do is I kept playing against him, and I would kill one of his champions, right? Nice. I would kill one of his champions, and then he would deploy another one. I'm like, okay, I killed one, but you deploy. It's fine. And then I would kill another one, right, with a spell, and then he would deploy again. And it, it happened over and over again. I'm like, what? And then by the end, just one. I'm like, how, how did you do that? Oh, look at all these spells. God damn. So that was, what did we see first? So we have Chains of Corruption was played. We had the um, Arcane Enervation, and then we had the uh, Pinkers. So look at all these guys. Took loads of damage, and they're cursed, and they're ensnared. So we're definitely going to see a cleanse here, right? The, um, what's it called? Emerald. Cleansing Emerald is my best guess, at least, of what's going to come out here. If it doesn't have Cleansing Emeralds, GG. It has to have Cleansing Emerald here. 
or a cleanse in one, some kind of AoE cleanse. Maybe it's Herbal Antidote, that's a cleanse. Oh wait, shit, he doesn't play any spells, right? So he only, he only has relics? So yeah, Cleansing Emerald is the only thing I can really see him having. These guys are all stuck, like they can't move. Huh, six healing only, interesting. Oh yeah, because he has dark healing, right? Um, this is Equip Champion, has minus one speed and careless. Okay. Man, he just got fucked. <laughs> Man, Shrine Master just got fucked. He, just, he can't do anything, it seems. He doesn't have cleanse. That is the downfall of this battle group. The general downfall of not having spells is the reason that spells are so expensive is because their effects are immediate, right? Oh, okay. Most spell, most relics and equipment, um, well, more so equipment, they're not as immediate usually, um, right? Like usually you have to also spend AP. For example, if you were to get an equipment that cleanses, you also have to use a spell afterwards, you know. Even though you do it, there are some relics. All right, so now we have the uh, wooden scales. It's right, where is it? Here. So we have wood, I don't know, what's he doing? He just, I think he had to play a champion here or something bigger. Instead, he decided for two relics. He, 45 Nora. Maybe didn't have enough. Because I feel like if they're going in, you want to deploy. You don't want to play relics. I would have been okay with the pride. But he just played the wooden scales after all the spells have been played, right? And this stun actually kind of blocks off, though. The stun is actually really nice on this Maleficia. Malef Malefic Maleficia? Ma Malefica? Whatever. Uh, ooh, okay. So that was one. We just saw that go off. They, uh, they're still cursed and softened though. But yeah, there's the, um, what's it called? The witching hour. So they get here, revel in their misery. So when an opposing champion with cursed, hexed, or diseased is damaged by an attack, this champion heals. So they get healing, right? Not only that, they have flying and they get, what was it? One speed. So they all plus one speed. And this is nice. Like, there are a lot of nice things that go with Forsaken Waste that are pretty strong. Like, that's a pretty nice ability, right? Speed, rev like, AoE healing, that kind of thing. But when you're against something with 60 health and you're at 40, like, all your champions have, let's say, 20 health less starting out. Like, if you're against ST, for example, it just doesn't matter if you have these nice little abilities, right? I mean, even if they're cursed, you're just like, oh, well, you have 20 extra health, so... And it's the thing with ST, at least. And with SP... The same kind of idea goes. Like, yeah, you can curse all their champions, but if they have two more champions than you, it's like, well, it's still not going to help. That's why SP and, and ST are so bonky sometimes. It's just like you can win against a, a theme with your own theme just because, okay, equipment, equipment, nice. I thought he double deployed. He did. All right, double, he threw a mind shank. This is really not doing bad, though. I mean, plus one speed is at seven, 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 ten. What? Ah, because he did the uh, ruin, right? So now he's at ten speed. And his three damage. Yeah, not, nice stats here right now, at least. Evasive, revel. Like, when they're together, this is not half bad. You have commander as well. So he's at 16. He's at 12. I mean, look at this, though. You know? If you have base 10 damage, and you have, even with commander. Let's see. Well, there's no war banner out, though. So it's one thing, I guess. So with war banner out. There's the uh, Oblivion Shield. With War Banner, he'd be at 13. That's plus 3. Oh, I forgot about him. He's at 14. It's just like... <laughs> I mean, this is the Domain, which is not bad. I don't know, man. I, I tried them out, and it might have been... I tried them about... I tried, like, four games with Witches, and I just couldn't get it to work. I mean, they have some crazy things. I just don't know how he's deploying so much. He had so many champions. All right, yeah, and this something like this comes out where you just double tap for Ranger Elite. Does he have drive? Mm, no. He can only attack. I mean, he already played the battle him, right? Thing is, eh, 72 Nora. What's killing? What's dying next turn? This Elven Bard is most likely dying. Charmer might die. Strategist might die. So a lot actually here. They might not. I don't know. This is a strange deck. So many relics and equipment. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering how many champions he is actually playing, uh, because he's been playing. He's played like three spells, three equipment already. He still has to have war banner in his deck. What else does he have to have, right? Four spells has he played? 
I mean, when you're play, playing for second waste in general, you don't really care too much if your champs die, right? So there's that. I don't know. I just always am like, when I, I oh man, I really want to like witches though. They're a cool theme. They're fun. All right, so what dies here? Um, like I said, I think the Charmer dies. I think Strategist dies. I mean, he's at 14. One, two, three, four, five, okay. So he can actually just double tap. Strategist is dead with a double tap from the Extinguisher. Um, the Asari can kill the Poison Serpent just because it has the lowest damage, right? There you go. Oh, look at that healing, too. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, and then the Charmer, yeah. So these two are dead. He might even be able to kill the Bard as well. He might be able to kill all three. He's not going for the Shrine here, though, is he? It looks like he's going for the Shrine all of a sudden. No, he's never going for the Shrine. What was that? What was that? 21 damage? Visionary? How did you just deal 21 damage? What the? How do you have Surge Enemy? Oh. Because of this, right? This champion gains the upgraded abilities of the last enemy champion deployed from the rune dock while the champion was in play. So that was the, the last champion played was that Ranger Elite, right? So that, that's where the Surge Enemy came from. So he's dead, like I said. Boom, boom. I mean, that does remove the equipment. He can get the normal globe even, which is strong for him. Man, and nothing died last turn. Holy shit. How did, I mean, the thing is, Michael Leo, this is like his third game of the day, and this is like Shrine Master's like eighth or ninth. So maybe my uh, Shrine Master's just tired. But it didn't even seem like he misplayed that much. It just seemed like he just, because he, he didn't go in over here, right? Which was... He didn't go in, and then he kind of half went in to kill the 72 Noir champ, and then he double deployed. That's why I don't understand. How in the hell did uh, Michael Leo double deploy? Oh, there's that too. That's what I don't understand. Like, that's, I mean, if he hadn't double deployed, like, this wouldn't be nearly as close, but somehow there's a double, like, I don't know how he had that not much Nora. He didn't gain any. Okay, that was a weird movement. Either he's playing a spell, or he misclicked. I don't know why he would move all the way up here. Is he playing a relic, maybe? Obviously, he's not playing a spell, right? So he's playing a relic, maybe? What's What relic are you playing here? We do have to remember, we do have uh, clone matter. So whenever a relic is played, that can be cloned. This is a pretty strong ability, isn't it? The clone matter. You can get free relics and equipment this way. Target. All right, now he has battle him up again. All right, does he go all in? I don't think. Let's see. This thing can 18 damage. He has Oblivion Shield. What's he going for though? Like, there's nothing here. Am I too sad if it's dying? Right. I guess the Igblay Witch is the best one to kill though. It does have the uh, Elisar and Coven. Thing is, these guys are all cursed, right? Look at this. Four speed. He's at seven though. He's not in the dead magic zone. He's should be cursed. Oh yeah, he is. He is. He has the minus one speed, so he should have seven. He just healed for ten. Ah, subzoom. I see. He took eighteen from Ranger Elite. And Ranger Elite just did the arrow shot for some reason. He this would actually have been a perfect kill, but he arrow shotted. Right? Because he did the arrow shot for 18 and would have been perfect, but he subzoomed and he got plus 10 again. That's funny. Oh, well, he gets the kill this way, though. That's good. So he's not on 19 damage. Or no, I should be at 18 again, right? One dies and one comes back. Hey, hey. So yeah, he's still at 18, but he gained some damage. So that's good. There's two stacks now of that out, but there's going to be no healing anymore, right? We have not only Skull of Decay, but we also have the Melephithia with the Dark Healing. So I doubt it. What was that? That was the, yeah, okay. What's a cooldown? Three, all right. There is, yeah, this is an additional five. I actually never knew that um, until I started playing Witches or tried them out. Is that the Cursed, if they're already Cursed, they take more five more damage. I never knew that was actually, I just reapplied the Curse. I never knew that actually uh, dealt more. 18 damage, not bad, not bad. And look, he just healed everything for three. These are all humans, right? I wonder if you could play like a witch deck with the, uh, 
uh, it's just such a slow. I don't know if you can do that either. I was thinking of playing like a witch deck that also used the foul right. There you go. There's the witcher's hourglass. So look, now he gains um, one extra AP, and he does. Let's see. Let me just read it out. Where does it say? Here, when this champion makes a successful basic attack, oh, let's go uh, against a champion with. God damn it! What is happening here? Uh, disease, curse, or hex. It gains one AP, and it has plus two damage for the attack. So it's. I mean, he's at thirteen damage. You know, is it twelve? Not bad. I mean, this thing is the only thing that's really saving him right now. Or not saving him, but like doing work. It's 21 damage on him. Double Mind Shank again. Or no, wait, no. Shackles and Mind Shank. He half moves in. He just doesn't have any more dad did magic zone. I wonder if he plays double. Um, so when I played for second ways or when the witches, I mean, I played double despoil, right? Just for the dead magic zone. You know, it's not even a bad idea. Just retreat here. Just like cover off this, so he can't like go through to do a shrine rush or anything, and you kind of just win, right? It's not only now two fawns versus one, but also now there's no uh, shrine to um, Nora gain. So the only way you really lose here is if you're losing like champions one at a time. Like if this whole force is just moving by itself like closer and closer and it's always like one champion like into a meat grinder, that's how you lose this. So you could just retreat if you can. This thing can teleport. So this thing will teleport away. This thing can like run down here. It was not a bad idea because it would just like distract. How far does that actually go? I've never seen a champion down here actually. I've never seen this whole section of the map used right here. None of this. Kind of a shame. But yeah, this is, I've never seen this played ever. It's like just never been. I wonder if there's like a. That'd be interesting if there was like a hidden, you know, egg, like an Easter egg, that if you go to this square, your, your you know, your font, something happens to it, like some kind of special thing. That'd be cool. For healing only. I mean, we have the skull of decay, so that reduced it by half. Should have oh, actually did it by more than half even. I thought it would round up, so I thought you would have held, healed by five, but I guess not. Or four or five, I mean. So he plays double ink blight, right? Because the one just died, and even though he is forsaken waste, so he has the cooldowns, he still uh, should have not got him out until at least one or two more turns. Like ink blight has to have to be playing, and also this is one of the main champs you play two times in this battle group. Like, usually, in Forsaken Waste, you don't play too many champions two times, but Ink Blight is definitely one you can do that with. Where, what champion was that? There was, or not champion, um, there was a... A spell that gave all of your champions, like, some type of an ability, but it lasted forever. Instead of it just being like, that's one I'm thinking, what could really buff witches, I mean, obviously there are no buffs coming out ever but it's interesting to think about is if the spell that we just saw the um the witch's flight if that lasted forever that'd be a really nice buff that would actually like i don't know put them up there then is it like right now i think they're like tier two in my opinion like the chroma or the uh witches they're two tier two at best Look at that, look at that movement, damn, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven AP movement. Nice. Even though that was reckless, he didn't even change, they didn't even reckless anywhere though. Like he went from here to here, I feel like it's where he wanted to go, weird. Um, yeah, and he's just deploying, very good, that's what I thought you should do. Like I said, now maybe, just, I, he could have, like I said, moved the extinguisher down here, and just like have, yeah, he'd be out of the fight, but put him down here and then run down this way. And then you can just poke in when you need him. Or he just gets, you know, focused, and then that gives you loads of time to do something. So I think he should have moved down here to this spot. Because here you can still get attacked. Actually, no. At least not by Cephalon or Selef. Sa Sapla. <laughs> Sapla. Uh, I don't know. The ancient one. I mean, these are all at half health at the moment. This guy, uh, they all have the sh shackle as well. Minus one speed, two damage. 
That's actually not a bad idea. If you're going to be playing the whole minus speed idea with the cursed, then why not just give him minus two speed, right? Boom. Now he's at four, four AP a turn, you know? He's at eight because of the shatter, I'm guessing. Yeah, the reclaim went off. See, this is what he's doing now. He's going north. That's a pretty good idea. So he's not north, but he's going either toward this font or toward the shrine, which is not a bad idea. Because, like, I think fighting this for um, Shrine Master is a like that wouldn't help. So this this was a good play. He's oh yeah I forgot. So yeah the the avatars can get um, cursed. So he's now cursed for the next ten turns. Yeah, ah oh, man, is there any? Just double, double that out. I mean, he can deploy here. I wonder why he hasn't played a um, sword mage yet. Sword mage is so good. I feel, isn't it super strong? All right, so he can double tap this. Does he have an AOE or sorry, range? He does, right? One, two, three. Yeah, he's in range. So yeah, the uh, wolf should be dead here. You can double tap with the extinguisher. Double tap or tap or attack once even better. Yeah, there you go. He can move him over here now because they're not going to go south. So just uh, move him up. The extinguisher either go here or here, just somewhere in range of the uh, shroud, obviously. What? Did he just shadow spawn something? It looks like he just shadow spawned something down here. Or no, I think that was the visionary getting in range of the shroud, and it just was a, at a weird position. He has to deploy up here, though. He has to be afraid of the shrine. I mean, they're still kind of far away. Let's say, till, I mean, let's say one more turn, they'll be here, and then next turn they go all in, and that one, that's when it get dangerous. He could actually move up his relic or his shrine too. There you go. That's a good play. That's a good play. Uh, that's good. Nice. Why would you put that on him? I feel like it's better on like her, for example. Anyway, uh, yeah, Banshee is nice because of the uh, fascinate. It will help your. Um, Avatar to run away if he gets engaged on. So now we have Defiling Aura, so you can't cleanse anymore in case he gets, you know, in case the Banshee gets close enough. As well as Domain Dead Magic Zone, Deafening Aura, that stuff. Now there's the Crown of Pearls I was talking about. Confused. So the Shroud is gone now, but there's actually still, uh, he still has Oblivion Shield. Who's he going for? Arrow Shot on what? Not on the witch, or has he used soften yet? I don't think so. It looks like he's gonna go for the extinguisher to me, but I'm not positive. Like, why else would you want to get rid of the shroud? Either you're going for one of these champions, and you're never you're never gonna put an equipment on in a champion that you want to kill, right? You're putting it on a champion that might stay alive for a little bit. So he's going for the Extinguisher or the Vitari. Vitari's not a bad idea, yeah. He's at 45 base health, so he's very squishy. Yeah, now he's just dead. One shot. Look at that. Air shot. Boom. There you go. Nice kill. Getting rid of that Shroud is quite smart of him. In general, this play was pretty strong. Ooh, 15 damage, though. Why did that go through armor? Oh, no. I forgot. Actually, Ambush does ignore defense. Yeah. So Ambush... Ignores defense. This is quite dangerous now. Selef is at 3 armor only, 93 health. We have a double tap coming from Inkblight. With the mobilization, we have double tap from these others too. So if they all double tap, it's dead, right? Even with the 2 armor. He's at 13. He's at 19 damage. Yeah, okay. Selef is 100% dead if there's a um, mobilization here. Anything to get these guys to be able to double tap, and this guy's dead. And it's just GG. Maybe he shouldn't have gone in so far. I think he went in because he thought he was safe, but he forgot about the Dark Seductress. He didn't see that. All right, let's see. Do we have Moby here? He could also, instead of Moby, you could also just play um, the, the equipment. Oh, he deploys? That's interesting. I don't think he should have deployed. I mean, if he didn't have to, that is. 19 damage. 17, 17 damage. 15 damage. Not bad. Why is he at 15, though? Commanded? Heh, he's not in commander range. Where does he have the commanded from? Oh, he's commander. 
Oh, because he's commander. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all good. I was wondering. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Go for the shrine. I just don't know why he didn't... If, Like I said, I think, I'm pretty sure, if he had uh, mobilization, he would have gotten the skill. Maybe he didn't have it, though. Move up with him. I think moving up with the Banshee this far is a very good idea because of the Fascinate. Fascinate will mess up anything that's over here. It will, like, move him back. So I think moving up and, like, sacrificing the Banshee is a good, a good play. Even though there is no Vaporize. I played my Banshee with Vaporize, which is an insane ability on a champion. 65 Nora, though, is damn cheap. Yeah, like I said, just move all the way up. That way you can like maybe mess up the elite, you can maybe mess up the enchantress, maybe mess up the charmer with who you fascinate. Nothing here has the um, iron will, so you know it's fine. All right, he doesn't. That's fine. I mean, he saves the AP for next turn. I don't think you really had to save the AP here. You could just go up. Might have been a bit better, but hard to say. I don't think you have to be too afraid of Banshee dying. And if he does die, like if, if all these resources will would to be were to be used to kill the Banshee, then you know you could just Shrine Rush. He's at forty nine health. He might just do that anyway. And he's at twenty one damage. Ah, ah, ah. that's pretty funny. He misplayed there. Forgot about the Deafening Aura. I mean, I'm guessing right. Why else would he move the Charmer? Like, why would you move the Charmer up? I think he misplayed. Now we're going to see the uh, stun. How did that happen? Oh, from Enchantress. So is Extinguisher dead here? Uh, yes, he is. And Seleph can now run away. There you go. So you can run away, but I actually think the Charmer is dead because he can double tap. Because Wailing Bench does have two armor. There's no healing coming out, though. So this guy is going to be at 49 health for a while. So if anything happens kind of scary can we say cleanse if we see the um, equipment the uh, uh, what's called 10 damage not bad even though he's evasive uh, what was I saying <laughs> I forgot about that again <laughs> uh, that's funny um, I even just used it like a game ago what's it called the the Reaper? No. The giant mace that has a skull on it. If he has that, it gives cleanse and it's in for second waste. Um, then he can kill the Seleph, right? Because he has 21, 21. Yeah, maybe not. It's close. Again! Wait, he's fascinating too. Dude, there's two champs with fascinating in witches. Not bad. So he double taps here. Is that a kill? Yeah, it is. 100%. So that's a dead snake charmer. That means no more camaraderie. Can he cleanse the visionary? Cleansing the visionary would be really big here because he could get a kill either on the sage or maybe even just the. All right, nice, nice painkers actually, because now that that means that the seductor doesn't have to attack. Is he dead? I don't think so. Subzoom is a bit weird though. What did I play on mine? I don't think I played subzoom. Did I? I don't remember what I played. But I don't think I played subzoom. But I do remember my witch also being a 78 Nora. So I don't actually remember what the abilities are. The upgrades. Alright, so he's dead. He can move up even, just to engage. Get the Norglobe or not. Why not get the Norglobe or engage? Is he afraid of an attack by him? One, two, three. He has minus two de minus one two speed actually. One from Cursed and one from the Shackles. I like getting the Norglobe, to be honest. And like Engaging, no, oh, whatever. He's not engaged right now. Actually, ambush two. Yeah, okay. So because the seductress will stealth and there's no detection here, the sage can actually not get away from the seductress unless he plays some type of AOE or something. I don't even know. Yeah, there's, actually, you can't. Cause I'll teleport, I guess. Ugh. Yeah, the ambush will go off if he tries to run away. And because he's invisible, you can't like kill him so that the ambush won't happen, you know? And there's no detection to make him. It's so, like the ideal play here would be to de detect the seductress and then kill it and then be able to move your sage.
But there's just no detection. Was that? He just do? Wait, who just? What the? Who just equipped something? The on the snake charmer. What? Hmm. Crown of petals on the ink blade, which is destroyed. Ah. Oh, he did get away. Somehow. I'm so confused, guys. I don't know why I got. I thought ambush was two spaces. Elven Page heals for six with the Divine Favor. But now, look, you're at one one uh, font versus a your uh, and you don't have your um, Shrine Nora, and you don't have any uh, healing gain, really, because of the um, this thing. Yeah, just heal for five. I said this nor globe. All right, where's he going? There's a reckless teleport, so it does always go a bit wonky. I mean, you want to be in range of commander if you can. So get in range first with the Votari for the extra commander damage. All right, so that's a bit of a misplay. Should have could have gotten two extra damage there. Even though, what is weird is... Ah, okay. This is interesting. So, I just saw him take 17 da or 15 damage. And I was confused, because he has 19. No, well, he had 17 a second ago. Well, he had 17, and I'm like, wait. How did you not do enough? He doesn't have any armor. But, what we can't forget here is the Apocal Oasis, which has the Enduring Aura, right? So, damage to friendly champions within 3 spaces is reduced by 2. So... It's kind of, that's so stupid. Like, how is a new player supposed to ever re be able to read all this and, like, remember it? Like, I, I took me a while. Like, I didn't, I always, I remember that this thing gives you teleport, but I always forget about the Enduring Aura. So I'm like, yeah, okay, this and then this and then this. But, like, there's so much to read and, like, think about. It's insane. Me, me, Sian Lamia. My Sion. My, wait, Sion. Shrinking gaze. He's at two four range. That's why I don't like them that much. Two four range always gets me a bit iffy. Sorry, Coven is nice. Base stats are okay. Empty health. I guess the shrinking gaze is kind of insane though. At least as like a defensive measurement. But life siphon is is okay. Commanded war banner. I don't know. Deflect. Nice. Or yeah, deflect. Actually, yeah, Crown of Petals on the Ink Blade again, so that's why he uh, is able to get this range damage out. There's no no Shroud anymore. All right, so the Visionary is finally dead. The Norglobe, I don't think he's able to get. Well, no, I don't think so. So yeah, the Norglobe won't go over to Shrine Master. So I, I mean... It depends how you want to play this game. If, if you just want to win, then I think all he has to do is deploy and then just chill back here. If he wants to like make this a long drawn out win, where or a not long drawn out win, then he could just go in. I don't know. Because I mean, he's gonna slowly win anyway. He just has champs, right? He can just keep deploying, keep killing one and stuff, and moving forward. Oh, ha! Forgot about that fascinate, did we? Fascinate, gonna kill the Apocalypse Sage. There we go. I wonder why he hasn't played the relic yet. What does it even give? I don't even remember what it gives. Oh no, it gives the Forsaken Way. We already saw it. The exploit, right? Exactly. I was thinking of the spell, because we have spell, relic, that's it. All right. Shackles, again. Careless. Shackles. Man, what is the cooldown on this? Because it's... I don't get it. Wait, what? Yeah, I don't know. It's probably like 20 Nora or something like that. But he still somehow has like cooldown reduction, maybe. I don't know. 
the wounds not bad especially on a range champion like, you don't see this all for 76 nora it's very strong so not only do you have, like this could be a meta for second waste champion in my opinion so not like even though you don't have the coven idea if you play this in meta it's still such a strong champion first of all you're flying second of all you're ranged you have deep wounds on a range champion which is always insane I mean, deep wounds in, in general is a very strong ability but on a range champion Yeah, I'm just chilling. I'm just gonna not say anything because there's nothing to say. Okay, there's a kill on a relic. <laughs> I mean, so now it's one, two, three, four, five, six versus one, two, three, four. So now not only is it champion wise, I don't know why some people just do this. They just don't give up. I do this like one in like 50 games where I feel like just playing it out. But some of these players just play so where every single game they just do this. We got forty. You have like no chance of winning. Literally, it's below one percent. I think you have here. The only way Shrine Master can win is if Michael Leo AFKs. Right. He's actually not cursed at the moment, which is not bad. He's cursed though for another five turns. Again, Dispoil, man. If he played Dispoil, he could get the curse to go off much easier, but he doesn't play any Dispoil. Only the Inkblight Witch and the um, Shade Strike so far. Hmm, interesting. Good. Oh, yeah, okay, I forgot. I was going to say, he can move up the Banshee. But I forgot there is, uh, he doesn't have Vaporize. I was like, hey, there's like, so little magic damage, just go up. But, yeah, I forgot about the, he's gonna, he's like, damn, this fascinate. Yeah, let him run away. If he doesn't move his bard back, okay, good. Like, oh my god, if, if he didn't, forget, if he forgot for the fourth time about fascinate and forgot to move his bard back, then I'd be so depressed. He has swap next turn, I think, again? Or this turn, even? I mean, he's not going to kill anything here. Ah, Wretched Witch. That's interesting. Hex, Charm, Wicked Aura. When an enemy champion within three spaces would gain AP, they get one less than normal. Like, that's not that good, is it? <laughs> like, I guess 59 uh, Nora for the champion is not horrible, though. This this was actually, oh man, back in the day, when the Wretched Wish first came out, it was one of the most OP champions, actually, surprisingly. Um, I believe it didn't have a basic attack. So the first version of the Wretched Wish that came out didn't have a basic attack. It only had abilities, kind of like Nika, for example. Um, I think it had Charm, I think it had Hex, but I think it also had like maybe um, like Disease Breath or something. And it had the Coven, but also it was tankier in one way. I don't remember how. It had the Wicked Aura. I really don't remember how how the champion was, but when it first came out, it didn't have an attack. That's something I do remember. And this champion was very OP. Like, everybody was playing it, even in non-witch decks. Man, these mine shanks. They just keep... I mean, minus one speed, two damage. If you're going to get the Nora back, it's just, like, free, right? And if you have, that's the thing with Forsaken Waste, you have so much to, um, stuff in your rune dock that you can play because 
um, you play so few champions generally that you have, let's say, instead of, you know, 18, 18 is my normal. For SP, I play between 17 and 18. Uh, for Forsaken Waste, you can get, like, fine. You, you do fine if you have, let's say, anywhere between 12, I would say minimum 12, and then, like, maximum you ever want to do is, like, 17. You wouldn't want to ever go over 17 champions in Forsaken Waste. That would, like, it's pointless. Unless you're testing things out. But in a meta deck, going over 17 with Forsaken Waste is kind of, like, absurd. He heals, at least. I think. No, he just has Purified. Never mind. He has Regen, though, for some reason. How does he have Regen? Oh, because he has Empathy, right? Yeah, she does. All right, so we're going to see a swap here. Commander. No swap? I thought he was going to he just drive. Yeah, he drove the uh, Ranger Elite, so I thought he was going to swap and then kill the Banshee. I guess he's in range anyway, right? Yeah, never mind. So he's at 11 health. Do we have any range damage here? He has 11 damage. There you go. Oh, he has one armor, though. Soften. All right, yeah, now he can kill. Poison damage, even, which is interesting. So he is soften, and then that the uh, this thing is soften. So we see two ranks of soften come out potentially. <laughs> Dude, what are you doing? It doesn't matter. Like <laughs> this is kind of like three hundred, right? This is basically three hundred reenacted. I mean, if they were on this line, right? This is the line right here, and they're doing three hundred. It's just like you can't. You're not coming through. And then the dead, the dead people are all uh, the Persians or whatever. Whoa! Why is this tender all the way up here? There you go. For curse for sixteen turns. Not bad. And there's the second ink bite again, so it comes out again. Extinguisher. Is this his second? I wonder if he plays two or one. I'm not sure. Are you double taps? He's at. Oh, is he dead? Yeah, he's dead, or. Yeah, he's dead. I keep forgetting about the structures every time. It keeps going away. At least now we have some dead magic zone that's a bit closer to the font. I wonder if we can deploy a, uh, a relic here, even. I think he can. If he goes in and deploys a relic or just gets in the font, that'd be not a bad idea. Yeah, it does have a, a three turn cooldown uh, loss of life attack, which is also good. This is also a champion that I first thought was bad. Actually, was it this one? I'm not sure. Because I thought it didn't have range and it was super like squishy. But dark healing is so insane. It's so divert, right? So comes in a good package at least, even if he is kind of squishy or she. Minus three, minus one, minus two. Why does he have, does he have two base? No, one base. Oh, but then you have the domain, right? Domain gives one dar armor, so that's why it only has minus one instead of minus two. <sighs> nice. <laughs> Curse for 18 turns, not bad. I mean, that's the thing. Like. I could see this champion being played at 6 speed, 0 armor, and 18 damage, right? Easy. It's like the curse almost doesn't do anything now. Oh, the pull on the Lamia, who has Shrinking Gaze. Are you going to move in with him? That, I would love that. Please move in with your Ranger Elite, because you're that dumb. I'm not dumb, but like, what's the point of this? You're, I mean, you've lost anyway, but... Are you going to move in with your Ranger Elite here? No, right? Please don't do that. She might have to kill. Yeah, with him. Magic attack? Do you have it up? Because then, then this is a good play. Because now he gets the kill without being in range of the uh, Shrinking Gaze. There you go, nice. Can't get the Norglobe, though. Well, he could, but that'd be, yeah. I would say he could get the Norglobe, but that'd be a bad idea. Man, these 300, they're holding. Just for now. Just just the last last bit. That's also a thing. Is for these, They don't have any tanks, right? The only tank you have is the Ink Blight Witch. And he doesn't, he's not even, she is not even that tanky herself. Like, uh, Oblivion Shield does help, but still only 54 health, 1 armor. It's not like something, 
If you had maybe two armor or like 60 health, all right, but 54 is not amazing. I think it's okay. Very basic, I think. Very normal. That's why I think the Sword Mage, which again, I don't know why it's not being played, has like 60 health because you get five from the War Banner and then five from the, uh, um, well, not boost, what is it? Uh, The, throw my check. Uh, you get five more HP from the um, the thing when you loyalty. That was it. Loyalty. You know what's really insane? I actually found this out from Nora that, and I played it for a bit, um, and I never knew. So I was wondering what theme can get the most um, like uh, HP buff from like natural things. Not like, hey, you have a few seconds of extra HP, right? But like full game, extra HP to everything. So there's a late game type of the thing, right? So first I was thinking about the, um, the uh, Voil. Because Voil can get 10 extra HP permanently with Wings of Steel and then five from War Banner. But they can't get any more because they, uh, they don't have boost whatsoever. They used to have boost, but not anymore. So that doesn't work. So that's only 15. 15 is good, but not amazing. Let's see. ST can get... I mean, it depends if I count the um, font bonus or not. But then the uh, beasts can all get plus like 25, I think. Because it's... Uh, fifth, no, it's 10. 10, right? 10 for the um, ST bonus. And you get 5 from boost and 5 from war banner. So I guess it's only 20 then. You can get plus 20 in all for the STBs, and I think that was the highest I could think of. And that's with the thing. But then I found something better because of Nora That. Nora That showed me the uh, Iron Fist Stronghold Beasts, so the Griffins, right? They can get plus 25 health in that. The ST Griffin, or the uh, IS Griffins, oh, I wonder if you do with ST. No, you can't because you need the War Banner, right? So, well, could you? I, could, I should think of this later, but the um, the Griffins, they can get, first of all, boost, because they have boost beast, and they're all beast. Not only can you get boost, you can get, um, uh, what's it called? Banner. So boost and banner is plus 10. Then you can get another 5 from, uh, this is one of the things I never saw, is because they're half dwarf and half beast, they get plus 5 HP from the um, the drink, from the beer. Because beer gives the every uh, dwarf 5 HP. So you can get 5 from uh, boost, 5 from banner, 5 from beer, or the keg, right? Then you can get another 5 from, uh, what did I say? Um, regal presence. One champion has regal. You can get regal presence, so that's another 5. That's 20. And then the lastly, lastly, something I also didn't see coming is Sermon. Because there is an IS uh, champion, the Cardinal, who has Sermon. So then if you have the Sermon in a good place, you can play the ability Sermon, and all your champions have plus 25 health. And that's basically forever, right? And you can at least, at the very least, plus 15 is pretty easy to get with the um, the boost and the whatnot. Did he just, who just surrendered there? Anyway, GG.